Ever since these incredible little isopods that we affectionately know now as Kubaris rubber ducky, when these guys came on the scene, isopods became a thing. And more people are attracted to the hobby than ever before because of these cute little faces. And as their popularity continued to grow, we needed more. We needed new species, new discoveries, the new exciting isopod that could rival the rubber ducky. And that isopod that I speak of, that's got the wow factor, the cuteness factor, everything good that we've all come to love with the beautiful Kubaris rubber ducky is in this little isopod here. Kubaris species Panda King. Obviously they got their name from the way they, their coloration, they look like a cute little panda. This species is far easier to care for. Far easier to breed. Look at that wee little baby there. In captivity, they replicate far easier for most people than do rubber duckies. They are one absolutely incredible isopod. Most Kubara species, Kubara species Panda King included, come from limestone caves. So while their calcium requirements are slightly higher than say species of Armadillidium or Brucilio or even Merulunella. We'll talk a little bit more about calcium needs a little bit more in this video. But they are truly an incredible warding isopod. A little bit smaller in size than the Kubaris rubber duckies, but equally just as cute. This is how I take care of my Kubaris species Panda King. We're in a nice type sealed uh, environment. They've got ventilation on two sides here and here, double vents on both sides. Nice natural inspired uh, bark slabs. Lots of natural native mosses, obviously in need of some replacement. They tend to break down all these environments. This is a species that hails from the warm tropical forests of Vietnam. See many of them here within the substrate. I do add, tend to add in regards to calcium, I tend to add things like calcium carbonate as you guys have seen me use many, many times over. I also have different types of uh, limestone or calciferous slabs that are often used in the, the saltwater industry. As you can see one here. And you can see them even amongst it right here. There, there's another baby there. They're all starting to emerge all throughout it. Babies and adults of all different generational sizes. But this provides a calcium source for them so they can shed their exoskeleton quickly, properly. This is truly a fascinating species. They replicate very, very well. And they're very, very easy to care for. Dietary wise, you know, I've used many different things from them. Kubar species in general are slightly, they're not strictly herbivorous like a lot of the armadillidiums, and they're also not uh, specifically uh, uh, meat eaters like some of the different uh, porcilios. So I tend to use products like uh, the, the Supreme Isopod Chow. Granted, now you can buy this, but you can also buy it as more as a protein driven or as more as a vegetarian formula from my good friend Wally Kern over at Supreme Gecko. Incredible, incredible product. But as these are slightly more uh, protein driven and not specific, I can also feed them different types of things like this, different types of shrimps and invertebrates and dried fish, any of those type of products. And it's pretty straightforward on how to take care of them. That's pretty much it. 
Now, as for moisture content, you can see that the media here is very, very moisture retentative. The moss is a lot of the natural mosses, which they are also consuming as they are omnivores. They're eating both of them. They're breaking all these components down. They're using up everything that is within their environment. Moisture content, I will add some when we go come time. This the one needs to be a little bit redone or re-added to it. I will add some more leaf litter to it. I will uh, probably add some more natural native mosses and stuff and so forth to it to provide that, that moisture bed and that nutritional bed for them. But they also slightly higher humidity than any of the armadillidium species. Very similar to the care for Marilunellas. Definitely the opposite end of the spectrum for anybody keeping things like Porcilio. Otherwise, very, very quick replicating species. As you can see, we've been disturbing them, so they've all gone into hiding. But uh, it is absolutely an incredible species to work with. So besides these limestone kind of calciferous slabs that are generally sold in aquarium stores for the marine trade, there's all sorts of other calcium sources. You guys have seen me, and I'll flag the video where I've used eggshells and things or like the tried and true cuddle bones. They're an exceptional source. They should be offered with all isopods. But there are other things. This is that calcium uh, carbonate that I mentioned. This is often sold as a reptile substrate. It's a grind up calcium carbonate. It becomes a dietary source. And then another one that I find that's even more economical is a, is a Reaganite, which is a, is, a, is a salt water product that's sold in the industry as well, sold as a substrate. Now you could also use things even that you could buy at your farm and feed store, such as crushed oyster shell, which is sold often for chickens, but they would work just as well as, as providing a calcium source for these animals. So if you're looking for a new isopod to try, a new species, something that'll catch your eye, something for me, I like to bring home species that catch the eye of my children, get them more involved, such as paisley. Well, the Kubaras species Panda King is a species I think will be around for a very, very long time. It's a truly fabulous species. It's incredible to keep. It's rewarding. It replicates very, very easily. A far better choice for maybe a first isopod than, say, the rubber duckies, which is the species that a lot of people find first that brings them into the hobby but often fail because it's a species that requires a slightly more challenging care. Panda kings, they're easy to care for as I've shown. They're easy to set up. Needs are easily met. They just require a little bit more warmth, a little bit more humidity, more calcium sources, and I think you'll be rewarded for years to come with fascinating, incredible micro pets. So thank you as always, my friends. Till next time, take care.